Hey folks, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with American Resiliency, here with an up-to-date climate outlook for all of our friends in Rhode Island. Rhode Island may be small, but the state has also been noted to be unusually full of witches, so I think you know you deserve some individual attention. If you want to check out any of the resources I'm going to be using, they're here on the resources tab of my website, AmericanResiliency.org. When we're talking about climate, I think it's really important to note that we're not where we expect to be. We continue to sit right about 1.5 C, which is validated here in the monthly climate bulletin from the Copernicus Institute. That's the climate operation of the European Union. In this recent article in The Guardian, which has some of the best climate reporting out there, we can see that prominent climate scientists are coming out to say it's looking more and more like we're off the models. The scientific community is also noting signs coming out of Antarctica, indicating we need to take higher end sea level rise quite seriously. It's very reasonable for you to be thinking about how your home could change between 1.5 C and 2 C. I show you these materials in the preamble because I want you to be able to do your own research and confirm everything I report without too much work on your end. Our base core source of projection information is the fifth national climate assessment. Data is publicly available from there as well as the figures. We have in our country some of the most detailed projection information available in the world. It was paid for by American taxpayers and you deserve meaningful access to this information. However, as a matter of congressional mandate, there's no funding available to communicate with the public about the National Climate Assessment. That's why I founded American Resiliency. We're the only nonprofit focused on communicating this information to the public, and we run on your donations. Rhode Island, I'm checking out your coastline first in the NOAA sea level rise viewer, and this is not so bad. At three feet and even at 10, we see some land loss, but it's not the pronounced land loss that we see nearby. If we look over at Cape Cod, we can see major changes, including key loss by three feet, and the whole area is looking highly erodible by 10. Back in Rhode Island, you're looking as stable as Connecticut, which does have really a very good outlook, but that doesn't mean that it's a challenge-free situation. Zooming in here on Providence, at three feet, we can see relatively little change, relatively little incursion projected into the built environment, and that at 10, the margins are actually still pretty tight. Although we are seeing damage to the built environment, it's still fairly small. However, I think it's important to highlight that some of the worst damage is in industrial areas. You can see here that Provport is looking particularly rough. Five feet where we begin to see damage to Provport, it increases rapidly from there. Getting potential pollution hazards back from the sea is a big project. It's a project that'll take years, but you can see that you have a not immediate emergency. You have a long-term emergency. It's time to start the work now if you want to build the best future you can in Rhode Island because your waterways are actually pretty good and there's a heck of a lot of ocean life that's moving north that needs places to live. If you continue to protect the coastal waterways of Rhode Island, this could continue to be a rich, sustainable fishery well into the future. And the reason the East Coast has that potential is the intensive management towards sustainability that has already been a part of East Coast fisheries for many decades. Going back into the viewer, this is the most vulnerable part of the state in terms of people's homes is around Bristol and Warren. We can see that at three feet, you're going to be experiencing marshy saltwater incursion potentially well inland and that the coast here is more fragile. At 10 feet, we see substantial land loss and it does look like this area will become more intensely erodible. Talking a little bit about regional infrastructure impacts, we can see that the I-195 is showing potential impacts that start to get very visible at five feet. This is major regional transportation infrastructure. It's gonna be a problem. We can also see problems likely to impact the I-95 in two places both down here in Providence and up by Pawtucket, you've got some potential infrastructure challenge for the 95. Problem areas on the I-95 look bad and expensive, but they're confined. They're potentially small enough sections of the highway that they could be an adaptation range. It could be plausible not to reroute the I-95 in this area. The, I, the 195 looks worse, like probably need a whole different bridge and different bridge placement worse. And these are bad problems. These are expensive problems, but it's not the same scale of transportation nightmare that we're talking about in Delaware 
or in New Jersey. It's a big lift, but it's not as heavy. And I would say that generally speaking, Rhode Island, that's your sea level rise overview, is that you look challenging, but regionally, it's not so bad. You're not getting it as hard as Massachusetts. You're not getting hard as many states and the region. If I were you, thinking about how to respond on a household level, I would learn more about my local utilities, especially focusing on sewage outflows. Look at how hard the projected changes are going to be for your municipality. I think it helps to decide if you're going to stay or go, if you think you've got a reasonable chance of having water that's safe to drink. Let's look at some other factors. I know this was some hard stuff to look at with the sea level rise, but you're not losing as much land as many neighboring states. I've seen way bigger coastal changes than we're expecting in Rhode Island. Like I said, you got a big lift, but I'm not counting you off. I think you could pull off a solid retreat and you're gonna see it's worth doing. I'm looking at American resiliency visualization right now, letting us see how many total days over 95 we project for different places at the county level. Rhode Island looks delectable. At 2C, we're seeing at most three additional days over 95 showing up on this map. There are parts of the country where we're looking at 70 to 90 additional days over 95. Rhode Island, three. To get some more insight on how heat is gonna change in Rhode Island, I'm looking at figure 2.11 in the NCA5. And we can zoom in here on the warm night map where you can see that you're sort of a moderate peach color, which means that you're gonna get about a week of additional nights over 70. I think that probably means that in Providence, those three days over 95, but please note under 100 in this case, are going to be accompanied by about a week in the low 90s where the nights are about 70. That's hot, but it's probably not going to cause population level health impacts. And that's really important. Even people who are quite intolerant of heat would be able to get through this projected 2C summer in Rhode Island. Older folks, folks with heart and lung conditions, infants and small children are all groups of people who are especially vulnerable to heat. Continuing cool summer conditions are important as we consider the needs of loved ones in those categories. And it is unusual to see this level of cool summer preservation. It's a major strength for Rhode Island. Back in 2.11, let's look at winter change. Here's your change in cold days. And you can see that the darkest color, that red color representing about four weeks less of cold, of days at or below zero, encompasses a lot of the state. Rhode Island is looking pretty much like a hot spot for cold loss in the winter. So that's a shorter winter we're talking about, a month shorter winter. Let's look also at the intensity of the change in winter lows. That's going to be from figure 11.3 in the NCA5. And this one is obviously too big to look at sensibly. So we're going to go to some SNPs. Oh, wow. This is a big change. This is a 10 to 15 degree lift in winter lows. Your winter lows throughout the state are looking to push well above zero. That's going to be a big change in plant hardiness zones. Across the landscape, a big change in landscapes. Totally different plants are going to be able to overwinter throughout Rhode Island. Your state is rocketing out of a classic northeastern four season environment towards a mild winter like one might see in southern Virginia today. This is a big winter change and it's a fast winter change. Unusually high from a national perspective. Substantial reductions in both cold duration and cold intensity. Let's look at changes to precipitation. We're here in figure 210. We do see some good news for Rhode Island. You can see that you're in the milder change band as far as increase in precipitation, hopefully meaning that you're less likely to get the sort of terrible floods that have been really impacting Vermont this year. To learn more about if you should expect deluge type flooding rain, I looked at figure 212 from the NCA5. I zoomed in close and looked at repeating patterns for your state, and I have to say it's looking really mixed. In these sub-figures, I found that your heaviest 1% of days will have substantially increased rain. However, your five-year daily max precipitation is projected to be pretty flat, with similarly non-intense increases in your annual daily max precipitation. So if we put those three pieces of information together, it sounds like we're talking about fairly 
rare serious flooding rains that you're not a major hot spot for it. If you look at the map at Northern Maine, you see an example of a clear hot spot where we see very dark signals on all three sub figures. Rhode Island, I know this is just a quick video, but I hope it's comforting for you to know these projected risks. Because if I were in a state with that much coastline, I'd probably worry that the future looked worse than it does here. Rhode Island really doesn't look that bad, even in higher end scenarios. You've got a pretty strong, craggy coast with limited potential for saltwater incursion along much of your coastline. The fact that you're not looking at a scary summer heat up or major signals for intense rains are both big strengths. Your level of winter change is big, though. It's even bigger than your neighbor, Connecticut. While you're projected to experience a similar intensity change, your winter is going to be shorter even than theirs, and that means the care and stewardship you show the land in your state is going to be particularly important. We all know humans are capable of an intense landscape change. It would be possible for us to do that in a good direction, to help care for the land and her potential, to help midwife landscape change in as healthy a way as we can. Rhode Island, I am wishing you folks all the best. I see a lot of potential here for this small state and your strong traditions of self-governance will be important on this road ahead. It's gonna be a heavy lift, but I think there's a good future to build in Rhode Island. And honestly, I think people who are looking for a cool summer in a fairly stable coastline ought to be interested in a small state with the potential to respond rapidly to change. Rhode Island is already doing the work. Keep it up, Rhode Island. Let's get ready. Folks, before we run the credits, I wanna give a quick shout out to a volunteer. You may have noticed that the thumbnails for the videos are looking a lot less like they were made by a mad scientist who really prefers all her media as a giant wall of text. That's because JP is helping me out. I wanted to show his YouTube channel here. If you like tabletop games, his content quality is amazing. It's much better than mine. And he's got a cool focus on family play and developmental needs. JP, my kids love your videos. He didn't ask me to do this, folks but I honestly think there's a pretty decent Venn diagram overlap of AR folks and people who would be interested in this content. Now to the credits. Folks, thanks for watching. And I wanna thank everyone in the AR community for your contributions that are keeping this nonprofit going. If you wanna donate, there's a link on the about page of our YouTube channel or on the top bar of our website, www.americanresiliency.org. I'm very grateful to our donors, to our volunteers, to everyone spreading the word online, and especially to everyone doing the work on the ground. Thanks for getting ready with me and talk with you again soon.